Hello everyone, welcome back to Mize Kill Labs. I'm Mize, and I thought today that we could um, revisit some of the glory days of Minecraft Labs. Um, behind me I have two contraptions that are um, pretty, uh, pretty important in the history of Minecraft. Um, both of these as far as I know, were designed by, Ethi uh, by Etho. Uh, this one here is the Ethos Lab Simple Mob Trap version 1. He uh, first aired this in episode 2, and it consists of four doors with a pressure plate in the center, and it allows you to capture a mob um, just basically by accident. And, uh, with this one I had I had a creeper follow me in. Uh, let me put some protection on before I mess with this creeper. And get my uh, beating stick out. How's it going in there, guy? As you can see, I have a creeper in here. He is uh, very angry. Um, there's not much I can do with him now. I can't really get to him. I can perhaps drown him if I'm quick. I don't know if I can do this without getting blown up. Let's see. Oh, oh boy. Good thing I have my jetpack on. <laughs> so yeah, he was able to get out. That's unfortunate. So this particular mob trap is... Um, it's quaint, it's old, it's first of its kind. Um, very resource light, four doors, and a pressure plate. You walk in and you're trapped. And if you're a mob, jumping up does nothing, and you can't open doors because you're a mob. Luckily I'm a player, so I can get out quite easily. So, Next up we have um, the Ultra Sentinel Mob Trap version 2. This was in episode 76 of Ethos Lab. Um, this was right after the 1.7 update when we had pistons come out. And as you can see, I have uh, I have another creeper trapped in here. How's it going, buddy? Oh, oh boy. And yeah, it's dangerous. It's, it's a dangerous uh, trap. It's a lot of fun to play with, but as you can see, um, yeah. So... I do like the idea of the trap though, so I have created a Mizeco Labs Feed the Beast version. Uh, this particular trap is a little bit more uh, camouflaged. Uh, the top uh, plate that hold them down is a uh, red power cover, glass cover, very low profile. Doesn't look like there's much here. Walk into it, and pistons push this up, and now I can't get out. So, what makes this special? Well, I have ways of dealing with mobs. I've decided to combine our um, different gaming laboratories together. Over here we have an Aperture Laboratories High Energy Pellet Launcher, which we all know what this beautiful device can do. It will vaporize pretty much anything on contact. And then over here we have a standard Minecraft dispenser with some arrows. So. Let's go see if we can find ourselves another creeper. Here's one. We just don't want these spiders. Come here, buddy.
<laughs> there we go. Alright, so. Ooh! Scary. <laughs> Man. So, now that we have him in the Mizeco Labs edition, we can now shoot him with an arrow. That's always nice. Now, I could continue shooting him until he's dead, or. Or we can, um, you know, taunt him some more, hoping that he doesn't explode. Or we can use the Aperture Laboratory, Laboratory's high energy pellet launcher on him. <laughs> now that's progress. Awesome. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. I think we're out of room in the scrap barrels. I had three open. Yep, they're full. Oopsie. I could make it an internet, uh, interdimensional barrel, but... Eh, yeah, I'm just so lazy. Do it later. Besides, I've opened up all these barrels that used to have cobble, so... Make use of them. So I'll just grab all this junk and uh, just throw it back in the system. Cool. Um, I made some wraith lamps or wrath lamps. Wraith, wrath? I don't know what the heck. I think they're wraith. Wraith lamps. Uh, they're pretty easy to make. Just dark iron, silver, wrath, uh, wraith igniter, and glass panes. Uh, when you're making this, it doesn't consume the lighter. It just damages it, or, or the lighter takes damage. And you can make, like, I think, I don't know the exact number, but usually, like, like 10 or 20 out of one lighter. So, we'll definitely have to play with these later. Um, they're really cool. If you've never used a wraith lamp, uh, you'll be amazed by what it can light up All right, really quick. Let me just go down here to our basement, which is very dark and very gloomy. And if I just throw a wraith lamp up, the effect is impressive, to say the least. That's a big area. Uh, as you can see, it lit up all the way down to here, so it's got, and you can see how far around it it lights up. It's got quite a reach. It's unfortunate that it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. I've made my uh, area too deep. So my options are few. I can either have two sets or maybe put them down a little lower, have them hang down 20 or 30 blocks. I don't know. Or maybe I'll just, I'll run my torch program on the bottom here so that we have uh, correct lighting throughout with the uh, regular torches. They're also extremely hard to break, so if I'm going to remove this lighter, I mean this lamp, I'm going to have to be standing on something. Because flying while doing any kind of digging always takes a while. And it takes like almost forever with one of these lamps. So I'm just going to leave that there for now. Check it out. This is what a quarry looks like running at 10 MJ per tick. It is flying. And if we go and take a look... I don't know if you heard that. Another creeper exploded. I got the turtles going again in the basement. So, over here where our quarry is, waiting for this world to load here. As you can see, it's just flying along. It ate through uh, some water here and it spread out all over the place. Um, you know, it's not the prettiest looking thing, but actually it's nice having a quarry filled with water because 
if it hits any lava, it'll be turned to obsidian, and it'll collect the obsidian, which will be very good because I need obsidian. As you can see, it's moving. It's really moving. And let me show you why it's moving so fast. So, I had these magmatic engines connected to a tesseract, an energy cell in a tesseract, sending out, like, well, these weren't even making one MJ per tick together. They, they do 0.4 each, I believe. Yeah, 0.4 output. I don't know what's the deal with the maximum output. Maybe somebody can let me know, but I was never able to get over 0.4. Um, so that means that total, I was getting 0.8 out to that quarry. It was horrible. It was slow. So a while back, I made one of these guys. This is called an energy bridge. And then I made a, a consumer, an IC, um, industrial craft to low, um, low voltage consumer. And this is a build craft producer. And you just put them together and they make one energy bridge. And as you can see, coming in, I've got IC2 low voltage at 40 EU per tick, which is a lot. It drops down to 20 every once in a while. And then out, I've got, on average, like 16 or 17 MJ per tick. That's a lot of MJ per tick. And it's going into this energy cell, and it's filling it. It's going up pretty fast, and I'm outputting 10 MJ per tick to the quarry. So, man, it's producing a lot of MJ. Amazing. Uh, to make these guys, I think um, it just depends on what you're looking for here. Let's see. Um, so I bring up the consumers here. Build craft, industrial craft. So here's the, industrial, the IC2 LV consumer I'm using. Really easy. Unbelievably cheap recipes. Um, almost cheaty. It's so cheap. I really think that these these are very powerful items and they should be changed to more expensive recipes. I mean, four gold and a low voltage transformer. I mean, a low voltage transformer is so easy to make. A little bit of copper and cable and wood, nothing to it. And uh, to switch this between a uh, consumer and a uh, producer, you simply just put it in the crafting grid, like just by itself, and it, it swaps it back and forth. Um, this guy. Oh. Um, the uh, buildcraft is, again, pretty freaking easy to make. Uh, sterling engine, which, very cheap engine. And gold, or a steam engine, which is also pretty cheap. Uh, and again, to switch it between consumer and producer, you just put it in the crafting grid, as it shows here. Producer gives you a consumer, and vice versa. If you take the consumer and put it in the crafting grid, you're going to get a uh, producer. So, incredibly powerful. Uh, definitely did not have this in the Mind Crack pack, but it's in the uh, Ultimate pack, and I'm going to use it because, wow. I, I don't know. If, if I did a setup with electrical engines running off of two the geothermal generators, I don't think that I would be getting 17 MJ per tick. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I don't know. I'm getting a lot of energy from this. It's amazing. So, Oh, man. This is just so ugly. Ah, I can't wait to get my industrial craft stuff upstairs. This is... Uh, it's just so ugly. This is horrible. I'm s I just hate looking at it. I had to add a uh, another recycler because it just wasn't keeping up with demand. And I didn't change the design. I just added onto it and made it even more ugly. And this is just a mess. Oh, man. So, uh, in preparation to, you know get up here, I've started putting in the floor of the industrial craft area. 
and uh, I've gone with a marble tile um, with spacing of these lights every three makes for a really bright area and I'll be able to build all kinds of machines in here and it'll still you know I won't have to worry so much about creepers spawning or anything like that or any, any mobs at all the problem is that I've run out of marble I have no marble so I'm gonna have to head over to the marble um, over there. I have like a marble quarry going on. Uh, might as well just show it to you guys now. Let's go over there. Let's... This is where I've been getting most of my marble because um, I didn't hit any major marble um, veins, I guess you would call it. It's pretty big to be called a vein, but deposit. There's a big marble deposit here, which I've been working on. And this whole area was marble. I've been just digging it out slowly and it keeps going so yeah so I'm gonna kill some more blocks and get some marble going and hopefully get that floor completed soon because I'd like to I'd like to maximize that recycler and set up some proper industrial craft machines. Uh, we're going to need a spot for not just that blast furnace, but for an implosion compressor and um, just a couple other ones. What are they called? One is a... Uh, Industrial grinder, I think. And there might be a fourth one. These are all multi-block machines that use the standard advanced casing and what is there, like an, another casing. There's three different le levels of casing. Um, each one allows the machine to do a little bit more. So yeah, I'm gonna get that going. getting there. Let's get a few, uh, just a little bit further. I'm almost done. Ah. Out of marble again. Oh, hey, man. Joining the server, huh? Yo. How's it going? It's going good. Back online. Where are you? Oh, you're upstairs. Yeah, just checking on my machine here. Yeah. So, have you, uh... You gotta, you gotta see the ceiling, man. Check this out. Hmm? What? It's all done. No more rain in here. Wow. That's gorgeous. Cool pattern. Yeah, you're happy with it? Yeah, I think so, man. Wow, look at all the red power blocks. That must have been time consuming. Yeah, it took a little while. Damn. What ate up the most resources with all the uh, red power blue lights in there? Oh, yeah. So it looks like sky, right? Yeah, I mean, I've already got the floor in upstairs above you. That's, uh, so... Oh, that's such a cool effect. It's even dusk outside, and it looks like it's daytime in here. Yeah, very cool.
looking pretty good. I'm getting there. One more uh, layer of walls, and I can put the roof on this place, or the ceiling. The industrial craft area is going to be much less ornate. But that's okay. It's industrial. I want it to be more like a lab in here. Like an actual lab. Almost done with the ceiling. This is great. Um, I just gotta finish laying in the marble, if I have enough, hopefully. I only have one, two, three, four, like five stacks left. I don't think it'll be enough, but uh, if it isn't, I'll go mine some more and try to get the ceiling done, and then we can start moving the industrial craft machines up here. See you in a few. Hey guys. So I am ready to move in to my industrial craft area. And I think we should start out right with a good sized storage unit. So we are going to make ourselves an MFSU. Uh, this particular unit takes a lot of different expensive items, Lapatron crystals, advanced circuit, advanced machine block, and MFE. So we're going to build all that right now. Uh, first up, we need to make a whole bunch of energy crystals to make our Lapatron crystals. So we're going to make uh, 10 of them right now. So there we go. There's our 10 energy crystals. Um, six of them are going to be for the MFSU and four for the MFE. Next up, we are going to make our uh, uh, Lapatron crystals. So I should be able to make six of them. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six Lapatron crystals. Now we're going to make an MFE. To make an MFE, it's a gold insulated machine block and four energy crystals. MFE. And then we're going to put it all together. So, Lapatrons down the sides, MFE in the middle, MFSU. This is a monster storage unit. Um, it holds, I think, uh, like a million EU, or is it 10 million EU? It's a lot. I think it's 10 million EU. Yeah, because this one holds 600,000. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, I've disconnected the lava and hooked up a lava, a uh, liquid tesseract over here. And now it's raining. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm going to disassemble all of this and start putting it together upstairs. I've already disassembled most of our machines, and I was in the middle of setting it up upstairs when I realized that I should probably start using an a a HV consumer uh, to uh, get my build craft energy. So I'm building one of these IC2 HV consumers, or, for, oh yeah, consumer, and it's going to need an HV transformer surrounded by gold. So I made a medium voltage transformer and got my insulated cable, electric circle, circuit, and energy crystal, and now I have an HV transformer. Awesome. Hey guys, so I'm just finishing up the industrial craft setup. Um, it's not completely done, but it's to the point where we can get it running again, which is always good. Um, yeah, I'm putting in a low voltage transformer former right here. Uh, the side with the three dots is always the higher input, and then the single dots are outputs. There we go. This particular line goes all the way down to my medium voltage transformer coming off of the MFSU. Oh, left, a, left it open here. There we go. All right, so these should all be getting power now, and they are, that's good. We can close this up. This is my new recycler. Um, much cleaner design. It's not finished yet. I still have to add a bunch of relays. I need to go make a whole bunch of relays here and add tube, and then it'll be done. This is a 
Oh, and I'm also missing a whole bunch of overclockers. Uh, I only have the three overclockers that I made before. I made five more recyclers, and the way I have it set up is this first one will almost always be running, probably this one too, and then as capacity grows, it uses more and more recyclers, so this one will almost never be used. But that's okay, that means it's going to be very uh, energy efficient, and it will scale with the demand. Over here we have a timer connected to some redstone jacketed wire connected to some redstone tube that fires all of the filters which send it all back into the recycling system I mean back into the sorting system this is the recycling chest it's hard to see but there you go there's a red I mean I'm sorry there's a black green and white color code there so that's the recycling chest and like I said we have a sorting machine we're gonna to wanna to set the sorting machine to auto and set it to do um, whole stacks. So this should be ready to go. Um, let's see here. Um, let's give you a quick tour of what I've done. We've got the industrial blast furnace here with its own MFE. I built a few more MFEs. This is another MFE here connected directly to this industri industrial electrolyzer. Um, I've got this relay inputting empty cells from the bottom and then we can put whatever we want to electrolyze in this top relay. I still have to build some kind of automatic uh, pull um, to take the uh, things that it's done with and send it back into the sorting system. Uh, same thing over here. This extractor and this compressor are both connected underneath the floor here to a, um, what's that called? Transformer, a low voltage transformer. And I'm going to hook up, I'm going to put relays on top of these and automate this as well. Um, right now we're running off of 100% lava but we have the ability to add other things later um, like I'm probably gonna hook up some steam generation over here and of course we can put solar panels out here I've added a solar a red power solar array to power this um, sorting machine among other things that we're going to do I'm probably gonna move the entire red power solar array up here and then use a high voltage transfer to bring the uh, blue electric power down to the main lab so yeah, got a lot done today. Um, let's uh, finish this up by running the uh, quarry. So let's um, give it 10 MJ per tick. Should be flying now. And we're still gaining power with no problem. Awesome. And here comes our cobble from the uh, from downstairs awesome yeah so I hope you enjoyed this episode um, next time I'm not sure what we're gonna do next time hopefully I'll have this floor completely set up uh, these things I just talked about over here and this completed and then we can go on some other type of adventure so I'll see you next time thanks for watching bye for now